We began in 2022 with Pastor Joshua Harris talking to you in the first week about the Word of God. He explained that Jesus is the Word who became flesh. Today, I want to open with Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish. I wish I could say that of myself last year. All things without grumbling or disputing, which is not the case. However, we're admonished by Scripture to say that we should walk without grumbling or disputing and become blameless to become representatives of His kingdom. Further, it says in verse 15, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. God is admonishing us to be able to do that in the midst of the struggles and the tests. As, as we know, 2022 might, might just be the same as 2021 and 2020. And yet in the midst of that, he encourages us to be a light that shines into the world. The question is, how do we do that? And he says, as you hold firmly to the word of life holding firmly to not just uh, the, 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 the things about spirituality, but the very word that gives us life. The Bible is the word of life. To understand the power of the Bible and the word of God, we need to first understand the power of death over our lives. And thus, I've entitled this message, In Search of Life. For centuries, humans have attempted to look for a way to have the fountain of youth how to live eternally. We see that in this 15th century painting in Germany. We see that all across different cultures, whether there's uh, Tibetans, whether there's uh, 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 Europeans or South Americans, there's always been that quest for life. The early Marvel comics dated in 1939 was talking about preserving life or cryogenics. The manga comics, it talks about the quest for eternal life and on and on and on we see this. Science has attempted cryogenics as far back as the 1940s. Today, stem cells are there simply because of a means to prolong and increase our life. That is growing at breakneck speed. And yet in the midst of all the amazing developments that further extend our life a few years to potentially 120 years old, at the end of the day, there still is death. While all of these advances are true, death is knocking at the door. Hence, my first point is the idea of the fear of death. The technical name or scientific name for that is thanatophobia. Actually, when you look at all the phobias that we have, they're somehow linked to this one phobia because all of these were fears of spiders or height. It's related to this idea of death, the fear of death. Now, there are reasons for the fear of death. One reason is because of the uncertainty, but one thing that nags us in this more present days of reality is what is known as Alzheimer's disease, a type of dementia that causes us to lose all our memories. That would be the equivalent of losing all your experiences, your ideas, the invisible things in your life. That would be a walking shell that has nothing left in him. And that's the truth about death, isn't it? Our death is more than just physical, it's actually spiritual. In his dying days, the great Steve Jobs was actually wondering about that. What will happen to all my knowledge? The level of uncertainty. What will happen to all my experiences? Where, where, where will all my ideas go? We're unable to answer that. That uncertainty extends to our inability to care for our loved ones. The values that I love and value are now gone. And the pain of the process or our inability to control that, that just breeds more uncertainty and causes even greater fear. The question to understand and overcome the fear of death is to understand what is death? For many, death is simply a form of physical dying. The medical term for definition for death is actually the cessation of vital physical functions, traditionally meaning demonstrated by an absence of spontaneous respiratory or cardiac functions. Basically what it's saying is you stop breathing and your heart stops pumping but we all know that there's such a thing as being brain dead while you're still breathing and you're still functioning in your heart and yet your mind is no longer there. Coma is one of those examples. And we know that to be true because physical death is not the only death. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse seven says, and the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to God. This speaks of two types of death that the Bible talks about. A physical type of death that returns to the ground, to the grave, 
but there's another one where a spiritual kind of death. This is really more what the Bible says about death, that the primary cause of death is really not just physical, it is spiritual. And that spiritual life is defined in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God. A spiritual life ends when we are separated from God. Our physical lives may be functioning, but it's retrogressing and, 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 and it's really being dismantled as we are separated from God. The darkening of our understanding or the lack of our understanding of God's word separates us from the love of God and the life that comes from God. And thus, the Bible says, separation from God is ultimately the final death and the real death. Because of our ignorance of his word, and that is in them, thus resulting in the hardening of our hearts. The fear of death is the reasons for the death and what is death need to be understood when we understand what the Bible says about the origins of death. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 clearly explains to us that we were once formed by God out of the dust of the ground, which means there's a physical side of us indeed, but there's also the breath that God breathed into our lives in our nostrils that caused us to become living creatures. As I pondered how to illustrate this, I thought of a mobile phone. Imagine a mobile phone with a battery full charge working day in and day out, but has no software in it. That would be a physical life alive, but the rest is dead. Because at the end of the day, regardless of how healthy we are physically, there is the software of love. And when that's not there, we are actually, in a sense, dead. There is the software of joy, the software of peace, the software of hope, the software of faith and kindness and mercy, which all of these are invisible. And hence, God teaches us that there's the need to live life according to the way He designed it. And when these are absent, you can be physically alive and yet be totally dead. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 continues where he says, The Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. That sense of freedom, given the life that we are living in the Spirit of God, was given to us. Further it says, But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, there it is, when you try to live this idea of just doing good and evil with the absence of God, this idea of balancing the good that I do with the evil that I do, and yet not be living for God or with God, then you will certainly die. The point is this, God's word is life. The uncertainty of our reality is made true for us by the certainty of his word. When Adam and Eve decided to sin against God, they veered away from this word that gives them life. The word that says that if you once decide to walk away from you, you will certainly die. Indeed, they died in the spirit. Now we find in verse 9, it says, The Lord decided to reach out to them out of his love for them, despite the fact that they were headed towards death. He says, where are you? And the answer is pr pretty much where we are, our phobia. I'm afraid. <laughs> afraid of what? I'm afraid of death. The fear of death because I'm naked, because I'm insecure, because I'm uncertain about where all of this is going. And thus, I learn how to be separated more from God. And that distance just causes more death to have more death to have more death. Further, in verse 16, God begins to reach out to man and says, wait, you got to stop this. And there God institutes this idea of I will make pains for childbearing and to painful labor bearing in fact that if we keep walking in this direction, the pain just gets worse. Down in verse 17, he says the word pain again to Adam. And here we find the reality of the broken life that just gets worse and worse as we go along in this path of death. Verse 19 says, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat from the food and you return to the ground. There it is. The physical death results, but the original death was the separation from God. Thus, from it you will be taken dust to dust, you will return. The sad part about death is it passes on to the next generation. One chapter later, the children of Adam and Eve are killing themselves. One more chapter later, and we find that no longer is man lived, living with God, but is separate from him. And now father to son in his own likeness, the image is handed down and each generation one after the other is dead. 
In chapter 5, the word died mentioned eight times just explains to us the origins of death, that death is the destiny of mankind with the absence of the word of God. Why do we fear death? Well, the reasons are clear. What is death? It's spiritual and physical. But finally, the origins of death has proven to us that that's where we're headed unless we have the word of God. The second point I want to bring is God's antidote to death. And that antidote is the gift of eternal life. Now it says in Romans chapter 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. If we distance ourselves from God or separate ourselves from God, we will die for sure spiritually and eventually even physically. Worse, while we're even walking in this earth physically, our life, the quality of our life is dead. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The gift of God is eternal life. Bearing in mind that God's word says the life that comes to us is actually a gift. In other words, we can't afford it. We can't buy it. We can't earn it. It is something that is freely given to us by his word. A promise that we can embrace and put our faith in and thus no longer have to be afraid, no longer need to be insecure, and no longer have to hide. God's antidote to death is his word that declares, I've given you eternal life. Now, to be clear, what exactly is eternal life? Well, it's actually about the quality and quantity of life. The Greek word is aionios, the quantity of life. For many people, when you hear eternal life, you think about the number of years. In other words, I'm not going to live just for 100, for 200, for 400, for 500. I'm going to live forever, for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. A good way to understand that is we're a flowing river. That never ends. It just keeps, imagine every drop of that is your life, the quantity of life. But Ananios is not just the quantity of life, it's also the quality of life. For instance, you may have a never-ending river, but it's polluted. <laughs> it's toxic, and there you don't have eternal life. Eternal life, as God would have it, is a quantity of life that is matched with a quality of life. And that quality of life is best understood when you think about sand. Think about sand in a beach and a pail. Your life, your little body is this pail where you keep putting sand and you can't fit the entire thing because there's just so much to live for. That is eternal life. For most people, we focus on our little bucket and our little sand when God says, wait a minute, I've got a whole beach for you to live for. In fact, I've got not just a whole beach for you to live for, I've got beaches for you to live for, and I've got water under those beaches that still have sand. I've got gold sand. I've got pink sand. And if you've ever been to Big Sur, I've got violet sand. In fact, when all the beaches have gone, I've got sands in all of deserts. In short, it's the quantity and quality of life that never runs out. The problem is we always focus on the limited bucket that we have, which is our physical life rather than the quality and the quantity of life that God wants to give us. God is the source of life. Eternal life is not just a myth or an idea, but the word of God declares to us it's a gift. Not just the gift, but the quality and quantity of life. Thus, eternal life is here right now. Eternal life does not start when you die. Eternal life is the quality and quantity of life here that extends all throughout eternity. Beaches in outer space, if you may. John chapter 5, verse 24 says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word, there it is, when you hear that word and believes him who sent me, has eternal life. Which brings me to my third and final point. How do you actually receive eternal life? Well, it starts by hearing the word of God. Faith comes from hearing. When you know and hear that God's promise is this eternal life, then you will receive it. A few months ago, I started researching about how to keep my lungs healthy. I'm turning 65 this year, and I want to stay healthy. I want to stay fit. And I wanted to exercise my lungs, given the fact that COVID is all about uh, affecting our lungs. In my research, I found this gadget called AeroFit. And AeroFit is a little gadget that you put in your mouth and you use to exercise your lungs. I found that there's a pro version of AeroFit and that it actually matches your phone and you, you exercise breathing it. 
And so after a few research, after hearing about it, I actually bought not the pro version, but just the, the regular version of Aerofit. Now, to be honest, I've only been on Aerofit for the last 12 days. That's actually my training schedule. But the reason why I have Aerofit and why it's benefiting me today is because when I heard it, I actually started to take action. Many times, the reason why we don't hear the word of God for eternal life is because we really don't care. The reason why I heard about Aerofit, because I was thinking about my lungs. And the reason why you're going to hear the word of eternal life, because when you realize that death is in the threshold, the quality and the quantity of your life is contingent and dependent on the living, life-giving word of God, you will hear it. It's not about you hearing me preaching right now. The more you know something and the need for something, the clearer you're going to hear that thing. John chapter 5, verse 24 says, But truly I say to you, whoever hears my word, not enough, but believes the word. <laughs> How do you actually receive eternal life? You hear it because you know you need it, but more than that, you believe it. As I've used Aerofit over the course of the last uh, few days, I've become a believer. <laughs> I begin to feel my lungs get stronger, and I can already picture what that is going to look like months and years from now. That's the same with eternal life. When we hear it because we know we need it and begin to believe it and begin to put it in practice, then we will see its effects. The spirit gives life, it says. The flesh counts for nothing. The spirit is the one that gives us life. It talks about this Greek word sopio, which basically means vitality. There's energy, there's strength, there's power. There's a, there's a hope that you're looking for because you're filled with this love, this joy, this peace, this patience, there's hope, this kindness. There's, there's this vitality in you that knows there is something to look forward to. And at some level, compared to life, your physical life, that's nothing. This says, the words I've spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. A quality of life that you cannot have physically, but can only be had with God. So how do I get this eternal life? Hear the word. Believe this living word. More importantly, live the word. In summary, the fear of death is real. Reasons for the fear of death are obvious. The fact that death is two ways. There's a physical death and the understanding that there's such a thing as a spiritual death is important to be clear about and to know the origin of death is separation from God. And every time we distance ourselves from him, that fear escalates. And every time we distance our friend, that insecurity and uncertainty escalates. And the more we hide from him, that fear not just escalates, it becomes real. The antidote to this death is eternal life. It's a gift. It's a free gift. I can't earn it. I can't own it. I can own it. I can't buy it. It's priceless. It's a gift. When I understand that, that starts now, here today, not when I die, today, 2022. In fact, I've learned to live not anymore from December 2021 to 2022. I've learned to live in eternity where all of this is a continuum. When you understand eternal life, you understand it's this endless array of life full of quantity and quality that only God can give you. How do I receive it? By faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, by believing the word, and finally by living that word. As I close this segment on proclaiming the word of God, I want you to join me and pick up a bread and a cup as we confess Jesus, our Savior, and join me in this short word of prayer. Lord Jesus, Thank you for the gift of eternal life that you have brought to us. Quality and quantity of life that is built on what matters most, love, joy, peace, hope, faith, kindness, and mercy. This day and every day, teach us to listen and hear from your word that gives life, to believe your word, and more importantly, to live by your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.